corporate law. We were in chapter two. Mm. And in chapter two, we were covering about breach of contract. And in breach of contract, we were covering about the damages. I mean, if a party has made a breach of contract, mm -hmm. what the damages other party can see? It's just been made out. P from G I P. So, um, just give me the solution. I will try to speak to the guy on the star one for the So, why not my job in so alien? Okay. So, in case of breach of contract, what could be the damages? Let's discuss measure of damages. The measure of damages is the amount which will put the claimant in the position he would have been in had the contract been properly performed. I mean, if one party have a breach the contract, what could be the damages for other innocent party? The damages will be the loss of the innocent party. The damages will be the loss of the innocent party. This is sometimes described as a damages for loss of bargain. In if he had not made the contract, what was his position in case of breach of contract? You need to put him in that position. Whatever he has lost, you need to pay their damages. It is particularly difficult to measure damages in case involving a building a contract. In case of building, how much could be the damages? Like if there is a contract to construct a building on a due date, but on due date, the cuts. A contractor have completed only the 60% building, not the 100% building. And if building is not constructed on due date, one party, obviously customer, will lose his business, will lose something. In that case, what could be the damages? So it is a particular, uh, it is particularly difficult to measure damages in case involving a building contract, as there are two ways in which the damages could, uh, in theory, be measured. I mean, in case of building contract, how damages can be measured? First case, the damage could be the difference in value between the building as it has been completed. And its value if it had been properly completed. So he has completed the building 60%. And the value of 60% completion is uh, say 100,000. But if the building was completed 100%, what could be the value? Say 150,000. So the difference between if it had been completed properly and what he has completed, the difference is what 50,000 will be damages that he need to pay in case of breach of contract. The contract was to complete building, say, on 1st of January. But on 1st of January, he completed 60%. The value of 60% building is 100,000. While if it was completed 100%, the value could be 150. So what a damage is he need to pay the difference between the value it had been properly completed and the value which has been completed. Uh, if you complete 90% 90%, then we need to see what is the value of 90%. Uh -huh. Suppose it is 130,000. What is the value of 100%? 150,000. So remaining will be damages. Or the cost of rebuilding. 
so that it meets the required specification. There was a contract to build a unique type of building according to requirement of the customer, but the contractor haven't completed the building, haven't constructed the building as per the requirement of customer. This means to meet his requirement, there is something extra work required on the building. So what is the cost of that extra work? That will be damages in case of building not completed as per required specification. And the usual measure of such damages is the cost of repairing the faulty work. Like in case you didn't complete the building as per the customer requirement, mean there are some faults in the building that customer need to repair, that customer need to rectify. So what will be the cost of repair work or further work that will be damages that a contractor have to pay to the customer. So the usual measure of such damages is the cost of repairing the faulty work known as the cost of cure. Mean to convert the building according to his specification, whatever is extra cost required that a contractor mean guilty party have to pay as a damages. However, this may not be the case where the cost of remedying the defects are disproportionate to the difference in value between that was supplied and what was ordered. And this we can understand through our case. There's a case between Roxley Electronics and Construction Limited. And this is the construct contractor who built the building versus Forsyth. And in this uh, case, Forsyth requested the REC to build a swimming pool with the depth of 7 feet and 6 inch. But they constructed the swimming pool with a depth of 6 feet 9 inch, I mean that was not constructed as per the requirement. This means this is not according to the specification. To make it according to the specification, it requires some extra cost. Like they have to deconstruct the swimming pool again, and they have to construct the swimming pool from the scratch again. And for rectifying, work, it requires a 21,000 pound. While the original contract was for 18,000 pound. Mean they received revenue from the customer 18,000. And for the rectification work, it required 21,000 pound. In that case, court decided as the extra work cost is more than revenue. In that case, this is not the remedy. So the, the parties had entered into a contract for the construction of a swimming pool, although the contract stated that the pool was to be seven feet six inch deep at one end. The actual depth of the pool was six feet nine inch. The total contract price was around 18,000 pounds. Fixing the error would have required a full reconstruction and would have cost about 21,000. So what the court decided, the House of Lord considered that as the cost of reinstatement would have been out of all proportion to the benefit gained. I mean, that much benefit they haven't gained from this contract. That Maximum benefit they gain from this contract is 18,000. And the cost incurred will put them into loss. So the difference in value only should be awarded. This was pound zero as the pool as constructed was just as suitable for swimming and diving as one built to the original specification. However, the House of Lord did uphold the lower court award of 2500 for loss of uh, amenity enjoyment, although they committed.
the amount was on the high side. Mean why you were requiring the swimming pool just for swimming. You can still swim and in this pool. Yeah. You can still achieve your purpose. But might be you cannot enjoy that much that you are expecting. Mm -hmm. So that's why court decided the value is enjoyment, is a swimming that you can fulfill. So in that case, court decided 2,500 damages should be picked. Next, damages, another uh, role is reliance damages. What is reliance damages? Enable that claimant to recover compensation for expense incurred in performing his part of the contract before its breach. Where applicable, they are given in place of damages for loss bargain the claimant cannot receive bonds. In what are reliance damages? Let's discuss another case. There is a case between Angelia TV Limited and Reed. Reed is an actor. Angelia TV Limited are producer and director. Who is using whose services? Producer directors are using actor services. Okay. R was engaged to play the leading role in TV play. The claimant incurred expenses in preparing for filming, mean for the scene, for the recording, they incurred all the expenses. They arranged the people, they arranged the cameraman, they arranged the space over there, but R repudiated the contract, R didn't appear for the recording. But they already incurred the expenses. And we yeah, couldn't find a suitable replacement and they have no other actor who can perform the role of R. And had to abandon the project. Mean they lost all the expense they incurred. So Anglia could recover the whole of their wasted expenditure from R. This is called reliance damages. Reliance damages enable the claimant, mean Anglia, to recover compensation for expense incurred. Mean whatever expense they incurred in performing his part of the contract, mean where one party performed his part by incurring some expenditure and the other party haven't performed his part. Then the claimant, mean innocent party, can claim all the expenses they got. So this is called reliance damages. Where one party performed his part and incurred some expense, they can claim in case of breach all the expenses from the other party. So a breach where applicable, they are given in place of damages for loss of bargain, the claimant cannot receive the both. Further points relating to damages. If there is no actual loss, the claimant cannot recover, or the claimant can recover only nominal damages. If the claimant have incurred some expenses, he can recover that. If he haven't incurred any expenses, I mean there is nothing he lost, but it, there is a breach of contract. In that case, he can claim nominal damages. Nominal damages, court will decide. What could be the nominal damages? What could be the penalty that the party, mean guilty party, have to pay to the innocent party? The claimant must take reasonable step to mitigate. But if claimant have incurred any losses, he should take some steps to reduce the losses. If he haven't took any steps to reduce the losses and now he is claiming about all the losses he has suffered, in that case, court will not provide the remedy for that, i.e. reduce their loss. And there is another case 
Brace versus Carter. Brace versus Carter. Brace was employed by partnership for a fixed period of two years. I mean, Brace is appointed as employee in a partnership business called Calder for two years contract. But after only five months, the partnership was dissolved. I mean, partnership business dissolved. There could be some problem between partners and partnership business dissolved. I mean, he lost his employment. But his contract was for two years. How many months remaining? Out of 24, 19 months remaining. Okay. Thereby, prematurely terminating his contract of employment, he was offered identical employment with the reconstituted partnership, which was immediately formed to replace the previous one. And those owners, they formed any other partnership business. They offered the brace in their new partnership business the same level of employment, but he refused. Why? Because my contract was for 24 months, so I will claim damages according to this contract. But they offered him another employment of similar nature in their new partnership, but he refused. Though he lost. Due to unemployment, he lost something, but he was having a chance to get employment in a new partnership that was given to him, but he refused by himself. So now he cannot damn this for the remaining 19 months loss of income. Because he must take reasonable steps to mitigate, and there was a chance given to him, but he Refused. Okay. So he refused the offer and sued for wages he would have earned had this job continued for the agreed two years period. So court decided Brace had not mitigated the loss he suffered by his employment breach of contract. Thus, he could only recover nominal damages. Not for the complete 19 months, he will be receiving pay as it and this. No, nominal that this he can receive. Yeah. A notional deduction may be made to reflect taxation. What does that mean? If you are suing the other for damages of your salary, what a salary you will receive? as a damages net salary rather than gross salary. You suppose your gross salary is 100,000, but out of this, suppose you are paying some taxation amount, you are paying some pension amount, and your net salary is, say, 80,000, so you can claim damages for 80,000 rather than 80,000. So a notional deduction may be made. To reflect taxation mean net salary will be awarded as a damages rather than gross salary. And there is another case between VTC and Gowley. A civil engineer was awarded damages by the British Transportation Commission in respect of a railway accident. In an employee injured due to accident and due to injury, he was unable to work. And now he is claiming his salary from the organization because he was injured. So the award include an amount for loss of earning. The question was whether the amount of damage should be paid to the recipient gross or net of reduction that would have been suffered by the individual had he remained in employment. It was held that the award should be made net of the amount that would reflect the deductions that would have been made for taxation and national insurance in arriving at the settlement figure. In court decided he can claim damages, but not for the gross salary, for the net salary that he was receiving if he was working. 
the board uh, the broad general principle which should govern the assessment of damages in case such as this is that the tribunal should award the injured party such as uh, uh, such a sum of money as will put him in the same position as he would have been in if he had not sustained the injury I mean what he was receiving if he was not injured, what he was receiving, so that amount will be provided as a damages rather than his gross salary amount. There's another rule. Difficulty in evaluating losses does not prevent the recovery. Difficulty in evaluating losses does not prevent the recovery. There's another case in Chaplin versus Hicks. In this case, Hicks is a TV director. Chaplin is a lady. The TV director asked the lady, Chaplin, you need to post your pictures on regular basis, say on a newspaper or on a website. And that TV director made four groups. They asked different ladies to put your pictures in one group. And Chaplin was asked to put your pictures pose in group one. In group two, there were other ladies who are posting their pictures. In group three, there were other ladies who was posting their pictures. In group four, there were other ladies. And from each group, According to the views, according to the likes, he will choose one lady. And then four, out of four ladies, at the end, he will select one lady to give her a role. So what happened? An amount was awarded representing the loss of opportunity to audition for a theater role, even though there was no guarantee to the claimant being awarded the role. I mean, what happened from group one, that Chaplin was selected, but TV director failed to inform the Chaplin or delayed to inform the Chaplin. He informed the chaplain either through letter, either through message, or either through email. But that move towards the chaplain late, I mean after the context was finalized. So, chaplain sue the Higgs, like I was in a position to win this contest. I posted as per his direction because I was the high caliber among all the ladies involved in the groups, but he failed to inform me on time. Mm -hmm. So in that case, what was decided? An amount was awarded representing the loss of opportunity to audition for a theater role, even though there was no guarantee of the claimant being awarded the role. In court decided, okay, chaplain claim are genuine because this is a fault of Hicks that he didn't inform the chaplain on time regarding his selection from the group. Other common law remedies. I mean, what could be the remedies in case of breach of contract? I mean, what innocent party will receive from guilty party? So there are two common law remedies, that is action for the price and quantum merit. I mean, what innocent party can receive from guilty party in case of breach of contract? What are the common law remedies? Action for price, action for price mean, if there was a contract between two parties, one party say, okay, I will, deliver you a good and you will pay me the price. So whatever is the price, that will be the remedy. Claim for agreed price should be made. I mean, if one party delivered the goods and other party didn't pay the money, so what will be the remedy? 
that price that was agreed between the parties. That is called action for the price. If the breach of contract arises out of one party's failure to pay the contractual agreed price, then the creditor should bring an action to recover that sum. Mean one party deliver the goods, another party promised to pay the money after delivery, but they didn't pay, so he can claim for that price that was agreed. If the contract is for the sale of goods, the action may only be brought if the property has passed to the buyer, mean you have delivered the goods, unless the price has been agreed to be payable in a specific date. What is quantum merit? Under this remedy, the value of contractual work which has already been performed is measured. If contractor and customer was having a contract, you need to build a building, I will pay you this money. They have constructed some work, but other party refused. They discharge the contract. So at the time of discharge, whatever the work is completed, they have to pay for that, that not for complete price, whatever is completed. So under this remedy, the value of the contractual work which has already been performed is measured. This remedy is likely to be sought where one party has already performed part of his obligation and the other party then repudiates the contract. So what is action for price? Whatever the price is agreed, if you have delivered the good, other party have to pay, mean you can claim that is for the complete price. In case of quantum merit, whatever the work is completed, you can claim that is for that part work rather than complete price. So these two are called common law remedies. What are the common law remedies? Action for price and quantum merit. What are the equitable remedies? Equitable remedies mean that will be decided by the court. In case of breach of contract, what could be the remedy for innocent party? That will be decided by court and equitable remedies are of three types, specific performance, injunction, and rescission. Specific performance, injunction, and rescission. What is specific performance? Court will ask the other party to perform the contract. Where one party has performed his part, other party haven't performed. So what court will order? The other party, the court will order to the other party, you need to perform your part. So that the contract work can be completed from both sides. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that is specific performance. Specific performance requires someone to perform their contractual obligation. Not available for personal services contract. It enforces positive covenants with the within the contract. I mean positively, you need to complete the contract as per agreed. What is injunction? In injunction, court will stop one party to do something. Court will stop some party to do something. Order someone to do something or not to do something, mainly not to do something. It enforces negative covenants with the contract. Mean through this contract will not be completed. Because if the other party will perform something, so there could be more problems. So that's why court is stopping the other party to not perform this. What is the rescission? Restore the parties to their exact pre-contractual position. If there is a contract between A and B, mm -hmm. A does something, B haven't done something. There is a breach of contract. Mm -hmm. Now court will order, you need to do that part so that you can put A into a position 
before signing the contract. Like if he has incurred any expenses, you need to pay those expenses so that he should move to a position before signing the contract. So that is called rescission. I mean putting both the parties in a position if the contract had not been signed. So specific performance, court will order to perform the contract if one party is not performing. Injunction, court will stop one party to do something because if they will do, there could be more problems. Ultimately, the guilty party and rescission Court will ask the guilty party to do something so that you can put the innocent party in a position before the court. Equitable remedies are only available at the discretion of the court. I mean, who will decide? Court. Court will decide whether there should be specific performance, injunction, or rescission. They are not granted. I mean, equitable. Remedies will not be granted by the court in certain situation where damages are an adequate remedy. Where only financial compensation can put the party into ease, then court will not say either do something or do not something or do something to put him in the initial position. So where only the remedy is damages mean financial payment. In that case, there will be no equitable remedy. There will be no performance or injunction. The claimant has acted unfairly where the claimant is on fault. In that case, court will not ask the other party to do something or not to do something. Mean there will be no equitable remedy. Because the claimant who is suing the other party, he is acted unfairly. He is guilty himself as well. I.e., he who come to the equity must come with clean hands. I mean, he should not be guilty by himself. If you are innocent, then court will decide about equitable damages. If you are guilty as well, in that case, there will be no equitable fracture. Third, order would cause undue hardship mean it is excessively difficult for the other party to do something according to court order. I mean if court has asked for the equitable remedy, but it is hard for the other party to perform or not perform, in that case, equitable remedy will not be awarded. The order would require the constant supervision of the court. If it is required, like we need to supervise the other party, whether he is performing as per the order or not, in that case, equitable remedy will not be granted. In that case, might be penalty will be awarded. And fifthly, there is undue delay in seeking the remedy, mean claimant put the case too late. And now, if other party can perform, even they cannot put you into your ease position. So in that case, there will be no equitable remedy, mean court will not decide anything. So what are the exception to equitable remedy? Damages are adequate remedy, mean only financial compensation can resolve the issue. The claimant acted unfairly. It is harder to perform as per the remedy, equitable remedy. Court need constant supervision for the other party to act, or there is an undue delay in seeking the remedy, i.e., delay defeats the equity. And there is a case Warner Brothers Pictures versus Nelson. Warner Brothers Pictures Incorporation versus Nelson. The film star, Patty Davis, Miss Nelson. I mean, Miss Nelson is a actor, film star, and they are producer or director.
they engaged Nelson for a film, for a role in a film. And they agreed with Nelson, you will not perform the similar role for any other picture, for picture of any other producer or director. The role we are giving you in our picture, you will not perform that similar role in any other picture. But Nelson accepted the offer of other director for the similar role. This means there is a contractual breach by the Nelson. So Warner brother sue the Nelson for the damages because that role we offer to him. But if he is performing similar role in any other picture, so value of our film will reduce. Okay, the film star Patty Davis, Miss Nelson entered into a contract with the claimant, claimant mean Warner Brothers, whereby she agreed that she would not undertake other film work or any other occupation without the claimant's written consent. The claimant sought an injunction to restrain her from doing film work, mean they ask the court for injunction, mean not to do the similar role in another film. Doing work for another company in breach of this agreement. The injunction would be granted. Injunction not to do something. So, however, no injunction would be granted to prevent her engaging in other occupation as this would force her to work for the claimant. She can work as a actor in other firm, but not for the similar role. An injunction will be provided not to do similar role in other film. She can work in other film, but injunction is relating to similar role only. So, chapter two completed finally. Let's move towards covering MCQs relating to chapter two. We have discussed in very first class. You need to cover those that by yourself. So regarding contract law, we are having a BPP kit of uh, 2020 from where we are going to cover the MCQs. BPP kit. Sources of law that you will cover by yourself. Formation of contract from here on. If the following contract must be in the form of a deed, a conveyance, a transfer of a legal estate in a land. A transfer of shares or a consumer credit contract. Which contract must be in a deed, written form deed? So, title deed is mainly associated with the land and building, not for the transfer of shares, not for the consumer credit contract. So, option A. Three point two in relation to contract law, which of the following describe an offer? A statement of possible terms. A statement of possible terms that is not offer. Displaying goods for sale in supermarket that is invitation to treat rather than offer. 
a verbal promise to be bound on specific terms so that could be offer could be written could be or 3.3 in a sale by auction that is stated to be without reserve, at which point is an offer made? In auction could be with reserve and without reserve. With reserve mean you are setting a minimum price. There will be bid above that minimum price. Without reserve, there is no minimum price set. Whatever you are offering, ultimately this will be considered as offer. So in a sale by auction that is stated to be without reserve, at which point is an offer made when the auctioneer presented the goods being sold? Yes, that is offer from yourself. Other party just have to accept it. When a bid is made, no, that is with re reserve price. When the auctioner's hammer falls, not the hammer falls, a hammer ultimately fall in bidding process. So option A. Three point four in relation to contract law, how long will an offer remain open? If no period is set for its expiry, one day, one month for a reasonable time, there is no specific time mentioned. It is for a reasonable time. Rather than you are accepting the offer after three years and you are saying it was open because time was not mentioned, no reasonable time. 3.5. Which of the following will terminate an offer? Posting a letter of revocation, a request for information, or death of the offering. Death of the offering, ultimately, when there is one party not present, offer is automatically terminated. 3.6, which of the following is not a valid method of acceptance? Not a valid method of acceptance. The offer is express words is a valid method. Offer who is making offer, offer who is accepting, accepting the offer. So which is not a valid method of acceptance. The offer is wor express word is a valid method. The offer is conduct. Yes. Silence of the offer. This is not the valid method of acceptance. 3.7. Which of the following statement regarding the postal rule is correct? Postal rule is correct. Acceptance is effective once the letter of acceptance is written. No. Once it is posted rather than received. Acceptance is effective once the letter of acceptance is posted. Acceptance is effective once the letter of acceptance is delivered. No, when it is posted only in acceptance, this poster rule applies. Other conditions, this poster rule will not apply. 3.8, which of the following is an example of a standard form contract? Where all the terms that are written on a contract, you have to sign the contract according to all the terms in utility contract, in case of admission in any institute, in case of bank account opening. A verbal agreement between two private individuals. No, it is not verbal. It is written. A contract for the sale of a house between two private individuals. No, in case of sale of a house, there could be even witnesses and everything should be stated. They can negotiate terms with each other when the payment should be made. A contract for the supply of electricity between a utility company and a private individuals. Yeah. Yes, this is standard form contract. What is D? A contract for employment between a private individuals and a small local shop. No, we can negotiate wages, days, hours, etc. 3.9. Which of the following statement concerning the law 
and the contract is correct. The law seek to ensure equal power gaining power between parties. No, there could be some bigger party, some smaller party. So law don't seek there should be equal bargaining power. The law will only interfere in contract where one party abuses a stronger bargaining position. Yes, if there is abuse, the law will interfere. The bargaining should be on equal basis. Regarding then the party's power. The law does not interfere in the formation of contract. No, in any formation of contract, law interfere. Law is there. Contract is a legal binding agreement. The law seek to maintain the bargaining power of parties in a contract. No, they don't seek to maintain bargaining power, but in case of abusing stronger bargaining position, in that case, law interfered. There shouldn't be any abuse. Which two of the following are example of a valid offer? A person verbally stating to an other person that they would like to sell their computer to them for 500 today. If other will accept, there will be a contract. So this is valid offer. One is valid offer. And it's not working. Come on. Let's see. A newspaper advert the states a shop is selling shoe for $20. Newspaper adverts are invitation to treat, treat rather than offer. Shop display are invitation to treat rather than offer. The other have to make the offer and then seller will accept. A person handing their shopping to a supermarket checkout operator. Goods on the shop display are invitation to treat. If a person have taken those goods and moving towards paying a counter, he is making offer and the person at the cash counter will be accepting the offer. What he is doing, he has pulled the products from the display and now he is moving towards the cash counter. So this is an offer. Oops. Okay, A and C. 3.11. Which of the following is an example of a valid offer? Which of the following is an example of valid offer? A display of good for sale. This is invitation to treat. Shop display. Shop display advertisement invitation to treat. Uh, an internet shop that advertises products for sale. Invitation to treat. Any advertising or any display is 
see this see a newspaper advert that include a specific treatment made to the world at large offering a reward for the return of a particular item if you have advertised to a large world with all the specific terms mean there shouldn't be any negotiation bar so that will be considered as offer that will be considered as offer An invitation for potential supplier to tender for the premium of services. No, that is not a offer. Supplier will offer. 3.12. Which of the following statement regarding a counter offer is correct? Counter offer. If you have made offer, the other party made another offer. So first offer is cancelled. Okay. Which of the following statement regarding counter offer is correct? Counter offer may be accepted by the original offer. Yeah, he can accept. You offer something, he offered other thing. This means first offer finished. Finish. Now you need to either accept or reject. So is that fine? Counter offer do not terminate the original offer. No, counter offer terminate the original offer. A statement that uh, inquires whether alternative terms would be acceptable in a counter offer. A statement that uh, inquires whether alternative terms would be acceptable in a counter offer. No, in counter offer, he is making offer. He is not asking for whether we can do like this, like this. No, because in case of counter offer, first he is finished. Now you cannot uh, further negotiate. A counter offer is made by the original offerer to the original offeree. No, is made by the offeree to the offerer. 3.13. In which of the following situation will an offer be terminated? When a letter of revocation is posted. No, poster will apply in acceptance rather than offer or termination of offer. When a third party who is a sufficient reliable verbally notifies the offeree of the offer's revocation. If due to offer. The benefit is for the third party. And third party has informed the offer about the revocation, so that will be considered revocation that we studied. And it should be informed to the offerer either by the offeree or by the third party if the contract is for the benefit of third party. So when a third party who is sufficiently reliable verbally notifies the offeree of the offerer's revocation, in that case, offer will be considered terminated. When an offeree inquires whether the offerer will accept a payment by credit card rather than cash, no. When an offerer dies, the offeree is unaware of the death and contract is not of a personal nature. No, in that case, if he has accepted without knowledge of the death of offerer, the personal representative of the offeror will complete the contract. So which option? B. 3.14. Which of the following would be regarded as valid finding acceptance? A counter offer. In case of counter offer, first offer is rejected. It's not acceptance. Acceptance subject to contract. In there could be some terms. If we do this, this, then I will accept. No, it should be without condition. A tender to perform one task. A tender to perform one task. No, it's not a binding acceptance. Tender mean you will offer something. Mm -hmm. Intending process like I want to buy something, please send your proposal. So that will be offered rather than acceptance. Posting a letter of acceptance in poster rule. When you have a poster, the letter. 
so acceptance is made which two of the following statement regarding acceptance of an offer are correct acceptance does not need to be communicated in a unilateral contract acceptance does not need to be communicated in a unilateral contract unilateral contract means social contract so in that case ultimately acceptance if you haven't communicated this means it is accepted automatically if two identical offers between two parties cross in the post then one will be regarded as acceptance of the offer. No, there is no poster rule like this crossing. Under the poster rule, a letter of acceptance that has been posted does not have to be received by the offer to be valid acceptance. Yes, if just posted, that will be considered valid acceptance. If no method of communicating acceptance is stated in the offer, then acceptance must be made by post. There is no that such rule. Moving towards further MCQs, formation of contract. Which of the following is executed consideration? Executed. Now, executory in future. Executed. Party will give something now, executory. One party will give something in future. So what is executed consideration? Providing the goods in return for payment at the same time. Now, executed. Both parties have to perform on the same time. Executory, one party will perform in future. If both parties are performing their promise at the same time when they are giving, taking, on the same time that is executed consideration. I mean at the time of making the contract. Executing consideration will be paid in future. A promise of payment in return for the provision of goods at a later date. So that is executory. A promise to pay for work already carried out. No, past consideration is not a valid consideration. So option A. 4.2. Which of the following describe how court deal with the adequacy of consideration? Consideration must be sufficient, need not to be adequate. Court will seek to ensure that consideration from each party is of equal value. No. One party giving something of bigger value, other party giving something of lesser value that will be accepted. Court will seek to ensure no party make excess profit. No, one party can make excess profit. Court will not interfere in contract to rectify a bad bargain. Bad bargain means where one party giving something bigger, other party giving something lesser. If they have bargain, they have decided. So court will not interfere option C 4.3 which of the following statement regarding the adequacy and sufficiency of consideration is correct consideration does not need to have a value to be sufficient no consideration must be sufficient but need not to be adequate adequate mean of equal value. Consideration is sufficient if it has some economic value. Yes. Yes. Consideration does not need to be sufficient, but must be adequate. No. Must be sufficient, but not need to be adequate. 4.4. Which of the following is true regarding privity of contract? Privity mean right of the parties in a contract. Only parties in a contract have a right to sue each other. But third party can sue if the contract is for the benefit of third party. 
third parties to a contract generally have enforceable right under it? No, generally they don't have. Only party to the contract have right. Only parties to a contract generally have enforceable right under it. Yes. Privity of contract only relate to rights under a contract, not obligation. No, this is not true. So B is correct. 4.5. Which of the following is not an exception to the rule of privity of contract? Is not an exception. A third party to a contract can sue for losses they incur under a contract if the losses are foreseeable. Obviously, if the contract is for benefit of third party and he is losing something, they can sue. So a third party to a contract can bring an action under it if an implied trust has been created. Implied trust has been created. Suppose, suppose there is a, a person called A and other person called B and other person called C. A is a father. B is his son and C is a son of B. I mean, he is a father as well as grandfather. A had a contract with B. Mm -hmm. I will pay you some amount mm -hmm. and you need to construct a house. You need to construct a building mm -hmm. for that amount. So that in the future, my grandson, C, get the benefit. So there is a contract between A and B. But who is C? C is a third party. Now let's see what they are saying. A third part to a contract can bring an action. I mean, if he... I want to build the house who be under it if an implied trust has been created. I mean, A was having a trust on B that you need to build a house to provide benefit to C. C is a third party. I mean, there was implied trust has been created. Now C can sue for damages to B in case of breach of contract. A third party to a contract can enforce right under it if it is equitable for them to do so. Not equitable. Four point six. Which of the following statement regarding intention to create legal relation is correct? Intention to create legal relation. Social arrangements are generally intended to be legally binding. No. Commercial agreements are generally not intended. No, commercial agreement always binding. Mm -hmm. A contract will be legally binding if both parties intended it to do so. Yes, there is intention to create legal contract. 4.7. Which of the following indicates that the parties intend to be legally bound? A letter of comfort. An agreement between a husband and a wife to transfer property between them. If there is a property related matter, then that will be called legally bound contract. An agreement binding in a honor only, in honor, in honor like uh, you are watching a match and uh, you have received an offer. If you catch the ball while sitting in the audience, we will pay you this price. This is called binding in honor only. Is there anything written? No. So they can refuse the price in case of even you have catch the ball. So that is an agreement binding in only. No, that is not binding contract. So option. Four point eight. Which of the following is a correct rule for valid consideration? Consideration must pass from the promisee. 
consideration must pass from the promise promiser and promise consideration must be adequate must be sufficient need not to be adequate pass consideration is generally valid consideration no only current or future executed or executory executory consideration is generally not valid consideration no that is valid so b c d all are inaccurate so what is accurate could be a 4.9 which of the following statement is true of consideration past consideration is uh, sufficient to create liability on a bill of exchange what is bill of exchange there is a party called a and other party called b a is a buyer and c is a seller a want to buy something from b but he don't have the money now I mean a want to buy say any material from b on credit basis we will say okay i can give you the material you will pay me in future but we have to sign a page that page will be called bill of exchange in that bill of exchange the amount the date everything will be mentioned like on this date i will present this page and take the money from you so that is called bill of exchange if before due date we need the money what we will do we will ask the bank i need to receive this money from you at that date you can hold the bill of exchange and give me the money so that on due date you can collect from a obviously bank will instead of uh, the amount is 100 bank will pay you 90 and will receive on the due date 100 from a. So that is called bill of exchange. Now moving towards this FCQ. Which of the following statement is a true of consideration? True of consideration. Past consideration is a sufficient to create liability on a bill of exchange. Yes, in case of bill of exchange, only past consideration will be considered sufficient consideration. Otherwise, past consideration is not a sufficient consideration. What is there too? Suffering some loss of detriment is not valid consideration. No, if one party has suffered some loss due to breach of contract, so they can. Consideration can be in the form of any act, even if that act is impossible to perform. If it is impossible to perform, then that act is not consideration. Performance of an illegal act is a valid consideration. No, illegal act is wide consideration. So option A, 4.10. Where a party accept part payment for a debt, they may at later date request payment of the amount outstanding unless the other party provided extra consideration when make the part payment. Which two of the following are valid extra consideration for part payment of a debt? Payment in the form of goods rather than cash? Yes, instead of cost, give me that good that I needed. So in that case, part payment is acceptable. Payment by a third party rather than a debtor. Yes, if third party approach you like that party 
your data is not in a position to pay you. I can pay you, but not the full this. In that case, part payment cancel the full amount. An intention by the debtor to be legally bound by the part payment. No, there is no legal binding. A guarantee by the debtor to make the payment on the date agreed in the contract. That case, obviously, he will agree to the contract the full amount rather than part payment. Uh, 4.11. Which of the following statement regarding a consideration? is correct performance of an existing legal obligation is a valid consideration for the promise of additional reward if you ask somebody to appear as a witness in the court because he is having information and you asked him if you appeared in the court as a witness i will pay you some amount but if he is having information, it is his legal duty yeah. to appear as a witness. In that case, he cannot receive uh, claim the, the reward. So that is performance of an existing legal consideration. Is a valid consideration? No, it is not valid because it is his legal duty to do something. Performance of an existing contractual duty is a sufficient consideration for the promise of additional reward. That case we have discussed if the pilot asked the co-workers. Help me to reach the ship to the destination. Don't leave me. Halfway through, I will pay you some extra amount. So if they were having a contractual duty, to move the ship to original, now they cannot claim extra reward. So this is also wrong. Performance of an existing contractual duty to a third party is a sufficient consideration for the promise of an additional reward. Performance of an existing contractual duty to a third party is a sufficient consideration for the promise of additional reward if a third party is receiving any benefit because you are having contract between A and B. C is a third party. If they receive something extra, you can ask them for extra reward. That is consideration. Performance of an extra service in addition to an existing contractual duty is not sufficient consideration. No. For extra benefit, you can receive extra consideration. So that will be considered valid. 4.12. Which of the following statement concerning privity of contract is correct? Rights of the parties in a contract. Privity of contract means only parties to a contract may sue on it. Yes, this was the statement. Privity of contract is not subject to regulation by statute. No, it is subject to regulation. Party can sue each other according to law. There are no exceptions to the rule of privity of contract. Now there was exception. Third party can claim if the contract is for benefit of them. Privity of contract is only enforceable on commercial contract. No, only commercial. 4.13. The contract right of third party act 99 sets out the circumstances where a third party has a right to enforce rights that may have under a contract. Which of the following? Statement concerning the contract right of third party act 99 is good. The third party need not be expressly identified in the contract. No need to be expressly identified in the contract. The third party need not be in existence when the contract was formed. Yes, it is not necessary. They are there at the time of the contract, but they can claim it on if the contract is for benefit of them. The act uh, and uh, confers rights to third parties under a company's situation only. No. The act confers rights to third party under employment contracts. 
only now 4.14 which of the following is true regarding uh, presumptions of intention to create legal relation presumptions to create legal relation parties in a social domestic and family agreements never intended to be legally bound no in case of sale of land contract they are legally bound Parties in commercial agreement never intend to be legally bound. Now they are always legally bound. The presumption in all agreements is that the parties intend to be legally bound. The presumption in all agreement in case of social. Now, any presumptions is regards to be intention of parties to be legally bound may be reverted, reversed. Reverted me reversed and the burden of proof is on the party seeking to escape liability ultimately the party who is denying liability they have to prove so this is d option and 4.15 which two of the following social domestic and family contract would be presumed by the court as intended to be legally binding social domestic and family an agreement where a father offered to pay his daughter a monthly allowance if she continues her education is that legally binding agreement no an agreement between friends to enter a newspaper competition together and share any prize between them that we discussed where grandmother and daughter and other person park in case they contributed the amount equally but they won and their daughter and grandmother refused to pay share to them so there was a legal contract. An agreement between a husband and wife who have separated for one to rent the family home from the other. If in case of separation, there will be binding on. An agreement made by a son to pay his mother housekeeping money while he stay at home. Oh. That is not binding contract. So let's take a break. After break, we will discuss some more MCQs. Coming in 20 minutes. Yeah.
Okay. Let's move towards remaining MCQs. Five point five. Which of the following actions can a party take where a term of contract proves untrue? In case of breach of contract, so far breach of contract, so far misrepresentation, so far wrongful contract, so far breach of contract. 5.2. Which of the following statement is true regarding representation? Term, main statement of the contract, representation, additional, like negotiations for the contract. That is not root cause. Root cause is the representation, a subsidiary statement. So 5.2, which of the following statements is true regarding representation? A representation is not a term of a contract. Yes. A representation does not induce the formation of a contract. No, it is a part of a contract. Induce me before the contract, what is discussing between the parties discussion. A representation is a statement made after a contract was formed, not before. Arguably. Yeah. Which of the following statement regarding implied term is contract? Terms could be expressed or could be implied. So which is regarding implied is correct. Term may be implied into a contract by statute. Yes. The court do not interfere in contract by implying terms. No, court can imply. Terms implied into a contract by custom may not be overridden by express term. To the contrary, no, they can override the express term. So option yeah. 5.4. In relation to contract law, which of the following describe a warranty? Condition, warranty, in nominate terms. That is neither condition, neither warranty. So, which is a warranty? A term vital to the contract that is breached entitles the injured party to treat the contract as discharged. Vital is condition. A term subsidiary to the main purpose of the contract. Yes, that is its breach entitle the injury party to claim damages only. A term that is not expressly stated by the parties. No, that is not. It is B. 5.5. Which of the following statement concerning the Consumer Right Act is correct? The act applies to consumer contract, but not to consumer notices. The act applies to consumer contracts, but not to consumer notices. If it is relating to consumer, it is applied to notices as well. Business are not protected by act. No, it is between business and consumer. All terms in a consumer contract should be set out in plain, intelligible language, mean understandable, easy, simple, and plain language. So that is correct. 5.6. In relation to exclusion clause, which of the following describe the contra preferentum rule? Contra preferentum rule. Exclusion clause are valid unless unreasonable or unless reasonable. This is not contra uh, confrontum rule. 
uh, in me, um, this means uh, act in, uh, if you are including any exclusion clause that must be clearly defined, there shouldn't be any ambiguity. Any ambiguity and exclusion clause are interpreted against the person seeking to rely on them. Yeah, this is. Exclusion clause must be validly incorporated into the contract. This is not contra confront. Point seven. In relation to exclusion clause, which of the following describe the main purpose role? The purpose of an exclusion clause is not to prevent the main purpose of the contract. Yes, the main purpose of the contract will remain the same. There shouldn't be any contradiction between main purpose of the contract by including exclusion clause mean the main purpose of the contract will remain the same exclusion clause cannot prevent the contract from its main purpose the main purpose of an exclusion clause is to help a weaker party avoid unfair contractual obligation no this is not for exclusion clause the main purpose of an exclusion clause is to give a business efficacy to a contract even this is not 5.8 at which point in our contractual arrangement is our representation made? When the offeree submit their acceptance to the offerer, then representation is made. No, representation is from the offerer to the offeree. During pre-contractual negotiation, Yes, before signing the contract, there will be representation. During contract, there will be terms. When the offerer submit their offer to the offering, no, these are pre-offer negotiation. Once both have, parties have provided consideration under their agreement, no, this is not written to consideration. 5.9. How are express term incorporated into a contract? By a decision of the court. Court. Statute can. Incorporate implied terms. By the parties themselves. By making the contract, these are express terms. By what is the customary in the particular trade? No, that is not customary. So option. See 5.102. Which of the following statement regarding the contractual terms are correct? The principle of a freedom of contract states that parties may include their contract and terms that they see fit. Yes. To be valid, a contract must be complete in its terms. Third party may not determine an essential term of the contract. No, there is exception. Where is a term is classified as a condition. The only remedy to an injured party is a breach is claim damages. No, in case of terms, there are both they can claim in case of Representation they can claim one. 5.11. An innominate term that is not condition, not warranty. An innominate term is one that could either be classified as condition or a warranty. How is the classification of an innominate term as a condition or a warranty determined? By the operation of statute law. By the offerer, by the court, by the offeree. So court will decide whether it is a condition or what. 5.1. Which of the following statement concerning exclusion clause is correct? Exclusion clause can be incorporated into a contract after the contract is formed. No. Exclusion clause are incorporated by the court strictly. By the court strictly. 
court can include exclusion clause. Exclusion clause are not regulated by statute. No, it is regulated by statute. Exclusion clause may not exclude liability for negligence. It can exclude. That's why the term is exclusion clause. So one, three, four, they are incorrect. So we can say court can strictly interpret the exclusion clause. 5.13. Which of the following exclusion clause is valid under the Unfair Contract Term Act 1977? A clause that excludes the condition that the seller has a right to sell the goods. A clause that excludes liability for loss of profit due to negligence. No loss of profit due to negligence that cannot be excluded. A clause that excludes liability for breach of contract. No, breach of contract cannot be excluded. An exclusion clause is a contract of insurance. It's not a contract of insurance. So first to write then. A clause that excludes the condition that the seller has a right to sell the goods. 5.14. Which of the following statement concerning the Consumer Right Act 2015 is correct? The act only applies to business to consumer contract. Yes. For business to business, we are having different contract. UCA. The act only applies to terms that have been individually negotiated. The act requires particular onerous terms to be equally visible as other terms. There's nothing something like that. The act only applies to contracts that have been verbally agreed. No, so what's the main key? Five point one five. Which of the following statement concerning the unfair contract term act 1977 is correct? That only applies from business to business contract. Yes, because consumer is business to consumer. The act does not apply to terms that have been individually negotiated. It applies business to business. The act applies to contracts regarding a transfer of an interest in land. No, there is no such thing. The act automatically voids invalid all clauses that strict liability for loss or damages due to negligence no key option is correct 6.1 breach of contract and remedies which of the following statement is not a lawful excuse for failing to perform contractual obligation not lawful excuse Actual performance is impossible. If actual performance is impossible, so this could be lawful excuse. Both parties agree to non-performance. If both agree, this is lawful excuse for breach of contract, termination of contract. Performing the contract will cause the party concerned financial hardship. If you are facing financial hardship, then why you entered into the contract? That you should consider while entering into the contract. After that, you cannot uh, say, oh, I am uh, having financial difficulties. That's why I cannot. So this is not the lawful excuse. 6.2. At which point does uh, anticipatory breach of contract occur? Anticipatory. Anticipatory breach before the time of performance of the contract. Anticipatory breach. At the time performance is due, not. Before the time performance is due, yes. After the time, no. So anticipatory breach means before the time you breach the contract. Five or uh, six point three. Which of the following correctly describe the type of a repudiatory breach known as renunciation? One party state that they have no intention to perform their obligation. Repudiated. 
cancel the contract by one party renunciation. One party prevent themselves from performing their obligation, prevent themselves. One party is preventing from performing their obligation by external circumstances. No, that is one party refused to do something. So part no intention to perform. Six point four in relation to the award of damages in contract law, which of the following described damages paid to protect the claimant's reliance interest? Reliance interest. Anglia versus the actor. So what is need to put the claimant into position? They would have been in if the contract had been performed. So no, that is a, that is a remedy. Performance. What is need to put the claimant into the position they would have been in if they had not relied on the contract mean pay the expenses he has bear that is reliance interest. What is need to recover the price of goods or services so that is price to the contract actual price to the contract. So option B. 6.5. In relation to contract law. Which of the following describe liquidity damages? A genuine pre-estimate of losses payable in the prevent of breach of contract. So that is liquidity damages that we define discuss definition in the book. Genuine pre-estimate of losses payable in the event of breach of contract. A specific sum payable in the event of breach of contract to punish a party for their breach. So that is not a liquidity tax system. A sum equal to the amount of work done plus an element of profit that is payable in event of a breach of contract, even that is not option A pre estimate losses. 6.6. 6. In which of the following circumstances would an award of specific performance be made? In breach of contract in an employment contract. In breach of contract in a contract for the personal services. No, in personal services, this is not awarded. In breach of contract in a contract involving the sale of property. Specific performance. In which of the following circumstances would an award of specific performance to be made? I mean, you need to perform as per the contract. In breach of contract in an employment contract. In breach of contract in a contract for personal services. In breach of contract in a contract involving the sale of property. Obviously, one party refused to sell or make a payment. So ultimately part C is looking suitable rather than A and B. 6.7, which of the following is an example of an equitable remedy for breach of contract, specific performance, injunction and rescission. Common law MD or action for price and quantum marriott. What is equitable remedy? Common law remedy are action for price and quantum marriott. Wow. Equitable remedy are specific performance, injunction, and rescission. Injunction. 6.8. Which of the following is true concerning the right of an innocent party where repudiatory breach of contract was occurred before the time? If the innocent party choose to terminate the contract, they are not required to notify the other party. No, they need to notify. The innocent party can claim damages for any loss, but not treat the contract as discharged. 
no contract will be discharged then you can claim that this the innocent party cannot refuse to pay for partial or defective performance already received cannot refuse to pay for partial or defective performance already received no they can refuse to pay the innocent party may affirm the contract and continue with their obligation mean in case of breach we are having two option either to consider pre sofa damages either you perform your part and then sofa damages so option d seems good 6.9 which of the following is not a lawful excuse for failing to perform contractual obligation not a lawful excuse performance is rejected by the other party performance is made impossible by other party performance is rendered more expensive than agreed due to external circumstances non performance was agreed between the parties which is not a lawful excuse we have already covered this financial hardness expensive then agreed due to external circumstances then why you agreed 6.10 which two of the following are test that should be met when determining whether damages are to be removed to be claimed losses must be connected in some way to the breach of contract remote damages losses must arise naturally from the breach of contract actually remote losses related to exceptional circumstances are too remote to be claimed exceptional circumstances losses arising outside the normal course of event will be compensated if the circumstances are within the defendant's knowledge when they formed the contract so this is the case we a 6.11 in relation to the law of contract which of the following statement in relation to damages is correct damages are not payable in relation to mental distress in case of mental distress distress means stress no we have not seen anything damages to rectify our defect are still payable even if they are wholly disproportionate to the size of the breach damages to rectify our defect are still payable an innocent party is required to take reasonable steps to mitigate their losses this we have read the rule and you need to take some steps to mitigate the rules damages in the form of penalty clause are valid and enforceable no in case of penalty clause not enforceable not valid so this rule we have studied 6.1 which of the following statement in relation to liquidated damages is correct presumptions liquidated damages clause are void and unenforceable in contract law no it is not void liquidated damages clause must be highlighted in the contract the purpose of liquidated damages clause is to deter potential breach of contract no breach of contract cannot be stopped liquidated damages are only payable where a condition of a contract is breached not only condition even in case of terms warranty it will be payable so option b must be highlighted into the contract presumptions 6.13 which of the following is true regarding injunction injunction are a common law remedy no common law remedy are action for price and quantum merit 
a court has no discretion as to whether or not to award an injunction no it is a remedy that is decided by the court injunction requires a defendant to observe a negative restriction of a contract yes passive performance regarding positive this is regarding negative that's why you are stopping someone to do something injunction may be awarded in conjunction with an award for damages no it's not a award for damages you are stopping something to do something 6.14 rescission is an equitable remedy yes so as performance injunction and rescission and where available make the contract voidable there are number of conditions attached to award of rescission which of the following is a condition that must be met for an award of rescission to be met the innocent party only must be able to restore to the pre contracted position no that is something else not rescission the right to resign the contract must be exercised within 30 days of being awarded rescission must take place after the contract is affirmed innocent party third party must not have acquired rights under the subject matter of the contract what was rescission restore the parties to their exact pre contractual position restore the parties to exact their pre contractual position so rescission is an equitable remedy where available make the contract voidable there are number of conditions attached to the award of rescission which of the following is a condition that must be met for an award of rescission to be made the innocent party only must be able to restore to their pre contractual position not only innocent party both parties the right to resign the contract must be not 30 days rescission must take place after the contract is affirmed innocent third party must not have acquired right under the subject matter of the contract innocent third party must not have acquired right under the subject matter of the contract i think uh, between c and d rescission must take place after the contract is affirmed oh. yeah obviously if the contract is affirmed after that rescission will be allowed and 6.15 for an order for passive performance to be made which two of the following criteria must be met that is must be in adequate compensation yeah damages are not awarded consideration must have a pass between the parties obviously consideration will be there that's why putting their on position same position the parties must both agree to the award it is decided by the court it is not necessary both should agree the contract must require performance over a long period of time no in case of delay no equitable remedies are awarded so option a and b and that's it for contract law the next chapter is law of tort that we will start in next lecture and then we will cover their mcqs so that's it for today